Hello, this is Annabelle Guberti from the law firm Kufervi. Nice to see you again. And I think it is time now to start our um, live webinar on arbitration in France and the UK, who has the upper hand. Let me just check whether uh, we are live. Yes, excellent. So so in the aftermath of Brexit, uh, which has made the enforcement of civil and commercial courts judgments from the European Union, from the EU, in particular from France to the United Kingdom, and vice versa, much more difficult and opaque, the option to uh, resolve disputes by way of arbitration has become much more appealing. Um, indeed, uh, as explained in um, various of our articles published on, uh, on our publication um, section of our websites, crefovi.com and crefovi.fr, which are restricted content, so if you want to have access to these articles, you now need to uh, purchase a subscription of, uh, um, for an annual uh, uh, fee. And uh, you can do this through our stores, which are crefovi.com slash store, and also crefovi.fr slash magasin for the French version of these articles. So yeah, so as explained in, the, in those various articles, in particular, art, Alternative Dispute Resolution in the Creative Industries, which we published a few years ago, Arbitral awards are recognized and enforced by the Convention on the Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Arbitration Awards 19, from 1958, which is called the New York Convention. And um, um, both the UK and France are parties to the New York Convention, and therefore such New York Convention remains unaffected by Brexit and uh, non impacted by the effects of Brexit. So, for example, this uh, this week I had um, another lawyer from uh, from the French um, uh, from the Paris bar who contacted me and said, "Okay, well, I need this French uh, decision, this French order, to be um, enforced in London in the UK." I said, "Great, fine, but we first need to actually do an analysis to check which um, which enforcement regime is going to apply to this order." because now there are three regimes. There's the pre 1st of January 2021 regime, which is um, uh, basically the um, uh, 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 enforcement via the Br Brussels 1 uh, regulation. Or there's also the uh, transitory uh, regime, which applies for uh, decisions EU decisions, which were basically which legal proceedings were started before the 1st of January 2021, but which were then eventually handed down by the EU courts, in particular the French courts, after the 1st of January 2021. So this is the transitory uh, regime. And then there is a post Brexit regime uh, uh, for, for uh, basically court decisions, which um, uh, which were handed down after the 1st of January 2021. And this is where it's completely opaque and unclear. So I, you know, uh, ask you to have a look at what we set out also in our, in our, in our other article called uh, How to Enforce Your Civil and um, a Commercial Judgments After Brexit. And you will see that it is a very opaque system indeed for these, um, for all uh, court uh, uh, decisions which were handed down after the 1st of January 2021. So in view of that, of course, arbitration is definitely on the rise because arbitral awards can be enforced through the New York Convention, which is non-impacted by Brexit, and a lot more trade agreements are now um, set contained now a, an arbitration clause, okay, to have all disputes resolved by arbitration. But how do you do that in practice? I mean, which forum do you, which seat do you uh, choose for your arbitration? Where is it the best place actually to locate your arbitration? In London, in Paris, 
So this is what we're going to discuss today. So yeah, so it's it's now uh, easier to enforce arbitral awards from France to the UK and vice versa uh, than to enforce civil and commercial court judgments from France to the UK and vice versa. So who has the upper hand between France and the UK in terms of uh, key features um, of each country for, in their respective arbitration systems? In other words, which jurisdiction is best to resolve disputes by way of arbitration? Well, so there are quite a few arbitration um, institutions in both countries, and of course, it's both capitals, which are the main seats of arbitrations, i.e. Paris in France and London in the UK, obviously. This is, these are not really regional uh, 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 forums. You, it's usually done in the capital. So um, for France, there's the established, very uh, long, uh, long time established arbitration uh, institution called the International Chamber of Commerce, which was founded in 1923 uh, in Paris uh, uh, by a Frenchman called Etienne Clement Clementel, who was the first president of the ICC. And then other institution arbitrations set up shop in Paris, such as the Centre de Médiation et d'Arbitrage de Paris, the CMAP, founded in 1995 by the Chambre de Commerce et d'Industrie de Paris. Then there's the Association Française d'Arbitrage, as well as the, uh, uh, which, which is not really a, uh, 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 I don't think that they have a lot of um, arbitration matters, the uh, Association Française d'Arbitrage. I'd say it's more like a network of arbitrators, to be fairly honest. But, you know, on paper, they say that they are actually an arbitration institution as well. Then you also have the Chambre Arbitrale Internationale de Paris and the also uh, Chambre Arbitrale Maritime de Paris for maritime law matters and law, so, so uh, sea law matters. And also you have uh, the new kid on the block, Delos Dispute Resolution, which seems to be, you know, a very uh, forward thinking arbitration center. Um, its website is in English, so that's delos.com, I think. And um, it, it, like, it's, it seems to be very on, on the ball. In the UK, um, it's worth noticing actually that the UK had, uh, you know, adopted arbitration in, even before 1923, because the London Court of International Arbitration, the LCIA, was actually incorporated in 1892. So, uh, it's quite a while ago, and it's actually not long after the UK's 1889 Arbitration Act became law. So the UK has really been a very early adopter of arbitration. Then there's also the um, UK offshoot of JAMS International, which is a, a, a US arbitration institution uh, founded in 1979 in uh, uh, California. And there's also CEDAR, the Center for Effective Dispute Resolution, as well as the London Chamber of Arbitration and Mediation, which is part of the London Chamber of Commerce, LCAM it's called. And there's also uh, Falcon Chambers Arbitration, which is a group of specialty property arbitrators from Falcon Chambers, and also Sports Resolution, which is a London-based dispute resolution institution for sports, founded in 1997. So as you can see, both Paris and London have got either general arbitration centers, such as LCIA, ICC, but also very granular, very specialized arbitration centers, such as the um, Maritime, uh, Paris Court of Maritime Arbitration, or the Falcon Chambers Arbitration for property matters, and also sports resolution for sports matters. Um, and so they, there are quite a few facilities as well that can be found in the center of Paris and London, where you can actually hold your arbitration hearings and meetings if you don't want to do them online. Um, OK, so I, I won't go too much in these sort of uh, uh, very pragmatic matters. But uh, uh, as you can see, Paris and London are really super well geared towards arbitration. So on this um, sort of uh, you know, institution set up in both capitals, 
uh, both of them are very strong. Uh, so there's no there's no winner in there. Both of them are very strong. Now, in terms of the key features of the French and UK arbitration frameworks, um, well, let's have a look at the legal framework. So most of the rules applicable to arbitration are set up in the French Code of Civil Procedure, the CPC, Code of Civil Procedure, uh, Code of Procedure Civil in French. So the French arbitration law distinguishes between rules application, applicable to domestic and international arbitration. So domestic are arbitrations where both um, parties are based in the same country. So uh, two French parties, for example, two English parties, um, as well international arbitration contains a cross border elements where one party is from one country and the other parties from another country. And um, so, yes, yeah, so French law uh, distinguishes between domestic and international arbitrations, and there are certain provisions uh, which only apply to domestic, while others apply to both domestic and international. And uh, this distinction matters, actually, because the rules applicable to ar international arbitrations are more liberal. OK, so. With regards to both domestic and uh, uh, international arbitration, France created a dedicated judge, un juge d'appui, who has jurisdiction over arbitration related issues and who acts in support of arbitral proceedings. So such judge may assist the parties in the constitution of the arbitral tribunal if any problem arises, especially in ad hoc proceedings. As the judge's role is limited, um, in proceedings governed by institutional rules. Okay, so the judge will only, um, uh, yeah. So 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 uh, the judge uh, basically has a limited remit, and it's mostly when these uh, arbitral proceedings are not governed by the rules of an institution, uh, an arbitral institution, that this judge. Um, may intervene in relation to, for example, an issue on the constitution of the arbitral tribunal. So in addition, the Paris Court of Appeal recently created a dedicated international chamber exclusively focused on appeals against first instance decisions in cross-border commercial matters and some other special specific matters such as the annulment proceedings against the international arbitration awards handed down in Paris, as well as challenges against enforcement orders in order to ensure coherent case law. So similarly, the French Court de Cassation, which is the French Supreme Court, uh, systematically assigns such proceedings to its first civil division. In the UK, meanwhile, the uh, current Arbitration Act, which is the Arbitration Act 1996, the Act, uh, regulates arbitrations seated in England, Wales, as well as Northern I I Ireland. The Act is currently being reviewed by the Law Commission, which published its which published first consultation paper in September 2022, a 153 pages long document, to ensure that the Act remains best in class. So in this report, it is suggested that uh, reforms uh, relating to confidentiality, discrimination, arbitrators' duty of disclosure, arbitrators' immunity, and other changes and clarifications um, sh should be envisaged in the near future to make London an even more secure and efficient um, seat for arbitration. So applications in support of arbitrations are made in the specialized courts in, the U in England and Wales of the business and property courts of the High Court of Justice, so typically in the commercial court or in the technology and construction court. And these courts consist of judges who are suitably experienced in arbitration and commercial matters. So as you can see, in terms of a legal framework in both jurisdictions and also so in Paris and London, we have also a really quite well um, set up and established framework here. So there is no apparent winner here um, again. So in terms of um, uh, the second key feature, uh, the distinction between civil law and common law. So obviously Paris and France is a civil law system uh, with a civil law code 
uh, as I'm sure you know. And um, many arbitrations, though, sitting in Paris are subject to foreign law, laws, such as English law or Swiss law. And some arbitral practitioners, including arbitrators, are familiar with general common law concepts. Having said that, though, I really do think that it would be really quite stupid to um, choose Paris as the seat for an arbitration which relates to a common law um, uh, type of, uh, of governing law, such as English law, US law, et cetera. If you, if, you has, if you have English law, it would make more sense to actually have the arbitration seated in England um, in a common law system. Having said that though, it's important to note that um, France, despite the fact that it's a civil law system, does have the some capacity to um, uh, host arbitrations in relation to uh, English law or, uh, or, you know, some US law uh, systems. Of course, the UK is a common law system. So. Um, both France and the UK are parties to the New York Convention, as I mentioned before, as well as to the ICSID Convention, uh, which entered into force in uh, um, 1966. So what is the ICSID Convention? Very quickly, it um, is the... Um, uh, it's a treaty ratified by 157 uh, contracting states, and it, uh, it relates to um, disputes um, uh, uh, between uh, states and um, other parties, and it's in relation to investments. So do look into this if you want to know more about it. In any case, both countries um, are parties to the New York Convention as well as the Inksit Convention. So no clear winner here. In terms of confidentiality of arbitrations, it's interesting to note that um, in France, as far as domestic arbitrations are concerned, arbitration is confidential unless otherwise agreed between the parties. So this confidentiality obligation extends to the name of the parties, uh, sorry, to the name of the arbitrators, as well as the parties, the arbitral institution, the legal counselors and the seats. With respect to international arbitration, no French legal rule provides for a general obligation to confidentiality for international arbitration. Uh, therefore, the parties must enter into a confidentiality agreement or provide for confidentiality in the arbitration agreement or choose an institution which rules expressly set out that arbitral proceedings are confidential. So um, in any case, uh, the, the French Civil Procedural Code, code provides that members of the arbitral tribunal must keep their deliberations secret, be it in domestic or international arbitrations. And it's quite interesting um, when you look at the, U, the English system, because there is no express provision for confidentiality in the Act, in the Arbitration Act. Um, However, English law generally recognizes the confidentiality of arbitral proceedings subject to limited exceptions. So for example, documents used in arbitration proceedings may be disclosed when ordered by the court or in cases where such disclosure is necessary for party to establish or protect his or her legal rights. Um, in the report established by the Law Commission, I just mentioned uh, uh, beef before, the, the Commission proposed that the Act should not codify English law on confidentiality in arbitration, concluded that it is an area best left to be addressed by the courts. And this is for two reasons. The first is that arbitration is used as a, in a variety of instances, and there is a trend towards transparency in some types of arbitration, such as the investor state disputes that I mentioned, which usually are exit arbitrations. And um, also the second reason is that existing case law and confidentiality is still evolving and not yet ready to be codified according to the Law Commission. So um, no change here in the future. Um, and, and therefore, again, for the UK system, um, if the parties want to have committed financiality, they must be sure that they have entered into a confidentiality agreement or provided for confidentiality in the arbitration agreement or chosen an arbitration which rules expressly provide for uh, uh, confidentiality of the proceedings. So on this point, I would think that France, uh, French rules are actually more protective 
for uh, uh, the parties in terms of confidentiality. Um, because, hey, let's be honest, another reason why parties would select arbitration is for the confidentiality. So, uh, yeah, it seems to me that the French rules are here more protective for the, for, for, for the requirement of confidentiality from the parties. So what about another key feature, which is the ability to hold meetings and or hold hearings outside of a seat and or remotely? I mean, of course, in the aftermath of COVID, um, you, uh, I'm, I'm sure, know that now much many more uh, meetings that used to be conducted in persons or, or, are now conducted online through Zoom or, 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 or Microsoft Teams. Um, it's the same with hearings, you know, in um, um, IP institutions such as the EPO, etc. And um, and um, can be strained continue. Okay, before it was taken as a case of force majeure because of the pandemic, but now, hey, everybody finds it much, way more convenient and um, and also cost saving. So, is it okay to still go on even though the force majeure aspect has uh, now receded? Well. Um, if with respect to the ability to hold meetings or hearings outside of a seat or remotely, nothing prevents them from being held under French law. So um, for domestic arbitrations and um, international arbitrations, proceedings are uh, governed by the rules set out in the arbitration agreement itself or by the institutional rules that the arbitration agreement refers to, but they have to be conducted in accordance with the essential procedural principles of French law. So in particular, due process, Adversari adversarial proceedings, so uh, le respect, respect du principe du contradictoire, as we say in French, the right to be heard and to present defense, etc., etc. So as long as these uh, essential procedural proceedings, principles of French law are complied with, it's okay to actually have the uh, hearings and uh, meetings uh, outside of a, of a seat or remotely under French law. And in, in relation to the English system, well, under the Act, the parties are free to hold meetings and or hearings outside the seat. This is this also applies to remote hearings and, and, uh, and meetings. So it's really flexible under English law. Um, cool, so they seem to be on a par on this, uh, on this uh, flexibility in relation to remote hearings. Um, then another key feature is the ability to claim costs of incurred for the arbitration as well as interests. Well, um, uh, yeah, so arbitrators may award interest on any monetary claim, which will be added to the principle upon enforcement um, in France. So um, under the uh, French Civil Procedural Code, interest at the French statutory rate will automatically apply and be added to the principle in any, in any rate when the enforcement of an international award is soft in France, unless moratory uh, interests have already been granted under the arbitral award. So there is no legal provision limiting the jurisdiction of the arbitral tribunal to hand down the decision on costs incurred in the arbitration, including counsel and experts' legal fees. So therefore, the parties may proclaim before the arbitral tribunal for costs included in the scope of the arbitration. Um, in, the, in England and Wales, an arbitral tribunal also has the power to award interests, simple or compound, uh, as it considers appropriate, subject only to the freedom of parties to exclude or limit this power. And similarly, um, a, the successful party uh, uh, may be allowed to, will be allowed, sorry, to claim a reasonable amount of, in respect of all costs reasonably incurred. So, um, um, yeah, there might be a, a, a pre-dispute agreement that uh, where the parties are, have decided on the allocation of costs, uh, but um, um, such a pre-dispute agreement cannot um, cannot say that uh, only one party must pay the cost of the arbitration regardless of the outcome. That would be a, uh, a null and void pre-dispute agreement. So um, to summarize, uh, in France as well as in England and Wales, it is possible to uh, claim for reasonable costs as well as interests, and um, like like one would do in uh, in uh, litigation um, with the courts. So now let's have a look at another key feature of it, these two jurisdic jurisdictional systems for arbitration, which is the statute of limitation for civil claims. So here, the UK, sorry, England and Wales, as they have the hand because. 
The UK Limitation Act 1980 provides that actions in contract must generally be brought within six years, six, from the time when the uh, cause of action arose, so the date of the breach of contract. While in France, actually, the French Civil Code provides that the default statute of limitations period applicable to civil action is five years from the day on which claimant learned or should have learned about the facts enabling him or her to ex exercise their rights. So in contractual matters considered as such, five year period starts to run from the date of occurrence of a damage. Six years in the UK, five years in France, I'd say that the statute of limit limitations is better for the party in England and Wales. Another key feature is the requirement to retain counsel. Well, in both jurisdictions, there is uh, no formal requirement to retain local counsel for the arbitration itself. Um, however, should the need arise to uh, request a state judge to decide on certain arbitration related matters, such as the constitution of the arbitral tribunal that I mentioned before, or emergency injective relief, uh, or even to enforce arbitral awards in France or in England and Wales, then retaining local counsel is necessary. Okay, so on this uh, requirement to retain counsel, both France and the England and Wales are on a par uh, and as, as, as uh, flexible, uh, uh, they are both quite flexible on that. So what about the availability of ex parte or pre-arbitration interim measures? Um, so in certain instances in arbitrations, some urgent decisions need to be taken in order to uh, stop a situation like st stop some situation to occur dead in its tracks because the um, consequences of such situation are really detrimental to one party or sometimes both parties and to the outcome of the arbitration. So let me take, for example, uh, let, let me take an example. Uh, well, if... Um, uh, if one party is uh, has got an account and um, in in France or in England and Wales, and this party because uh, it has a view that uh, there's going to be an arbitration and, and uh, uh, doesn't want to uh, have to pay potentially any uh, any damages to the other party, so this party starts to clear the account. Uh, located at the seat of the arbitration and um, and uh, move the funds uh, elsewhere in the world. Well, an, an ex parte interim measure could be taken pre-arbitration by the opposite party to actually freeze the assets in this account. This is an example of an interim measure pre-arbitration, which could be taken ex parte. So um, in France, well, the French Civil Procedural Code, uh, which applies in this particular instance, both domestic and international arbitration, uh, provides that the existence of an arbitration agreement does not prevent a party from seeking pre-arbitration interim or conservatory measures before a French state court, as long as the arbitral tribunal has not been appointed. Such measures, measures can be ordered to gather evidence before commencement of the arbitral proceedings. A party who seeks other interim or provisional measures, such as freezing order, that is just mentioned, mesure conservatoire in French, or cons constitution of escrow accounts reserves, séquestre. So this is where you would actually put the money um, into a, uh, um, an escrow agreement waiting for the outcome of the arbitral arbitration, uh, shall have to demonstrate urgency. In England and Wales, pre-arbitration interim measures are also available and uh, will be granted ex parte, so without notice, in limited but appropriate cases. Uh, these are usually for urgent situations where a delay may prejudice the right of the party seeking the interim measure. However, they are subject to a subsequent inter partes on notice hearing to determine whether the interim measure should re remain in place or stopped. And uh, the grant of such interim measures is limited to situations where the arbitral tribunal or institution holding those powers either has no power or is unable for the time being to act effectively. Um, it is not uncommon for the English courts to grant such interim measures. So on the ex parte uh, pre-arbitration interim measures, both France and uh, England and Wales have an appropriate system for the parties to be able to hold on <laughs> to the other party's assets um, pending the outcome of the arbitration. 
And what about enforcement of arbitral awards? Well, um, an, an international arbitral award can only be enforced in France if it is rendered effective by an enforcement order called exequatur. So this procedure is non-adversarial and only allows the French judge limited control. Um, indeed, the judge is solely requested to verify if the award uh, whose enforcement is sought does exist and whether it is not manifestly contrary to the French definition of international public policy. Uh, the cases where French judges refuse to grant an exequatur are very rare. So as soon as you've got your exequatur, decision, then you can enforce the um, award in France. In England and Wales, uh, an application for leave to enforce an award should be made in uh, an arbitration claim form uh, pursuant to uh, the UK's civil procedure rules. And uh, the arbitration claim form should be supported by an affidavit or a witness statement containing the information uh, specified in the, in the CPR and also some exhibit originals or copies of the arbitration award and agreement need to be attached to this application. Um, originals and or duly certified copies of these documents must be submitted if the award is a New York Convention award. And um, yeah, so it's also possible to uh, uh, enforce, of course, arbitral awards in England. Um, it seems to be a bit convoluted, to be fairly honest, uh, like there are plenty of forms in England and Wales and uh, you need to, uh, you know, attach plenty of things. I mean, I'm sure, you know, when you day, do it day in and day out, eventually it becomes easy, but it seems to me that the French system is a bit more streamlined and efficient on this one, to be, to be honest. Um, yeah, so... In relation to the grounds for annulment of arbitral awards, and um, uh, this is a, a key, a very important key feature because I think that the dreaded uh, thought of any party to an arbitration is uh, to have an arbitral award which in which we have a winning party annulled and, and cancelled. This is, this is always, I'd say this is really the Achilles heel of uh, arbitration. The fact that um, sometimes arbitral awards are uh, challenged, successfully challenged, and then annulled. So, so what are the grounds for annulment of arbitral awards in France? So there are no additional grounds for the annulment of international awards to those based on the criteria for the recognition and enforcement of awards under the New York Convention in the French system. On the contrary, French law is more liberal than the New York Convention, as the annulment of the award at the seat of arbitration is not ground for refusing its enforcement or recognition in France. Unbelievable. Yet, the French um, courts would agree the enforcement of, a, uh, of an award, even if it's been uh, successfully challenged at the seat of arbitration. Yeah. Uh, in domestic arbitration, as an additional condition, the award must be signed and state the reasons for the decisions therein, it state the names of the arbitrator, and it must be adopted by a majority vote if the uh, tribunal consists of more than one arbitrator. Anyway, um, so uh, under the French uh, Civil Procedural Code, neither an action for annulment against an award nor an appeal against an order granting exequatur automatically suspends the enforcement proceedings. However, a party may request suspension or adaptation of enforcement by filing a petition with the first president of the Court of Appeal or the judge in charge of managing the proceedings, the juge conseiller de la mise en état, once such judge is uh, appointed by the Court of Appeal. In order to succeed, the applicant must demonstrate that enforcement is likely to lead to manifestly excessive consequences which means that the enforcement can lead to, for example, the debtor's insolvency or a serious risk of non-recovery of the funds in case the award is annulled and all the uh, order granting executor is reversed. So really interestingly, under the French system, uh, it, 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 even if there is an action for annulment going on against an award, this is not going to automatically suspend the enforcement proceedings. In the UK, um, oh, sorry, another important point about France, contrary to the vast majority of other jurisdictions, the annulment of an award 
at the seat of arbitration is neither a ground nor a significant factor to prevent such award from being recognized and enforced in France. So French arbitration law concedes that the award is not attached to the seat of arbitration, but rather forms part of an arbitral legal order distinct from state jurisdictions legal orders, and that its annulment at the seat has no impact on its validity. This is a very, very forward thinking and also independent approach. And indeed, uh, England and Wales does not do that. Uh, with respect to, um, to uh, uh, grants for annulment um, of awards additional to those based on the criteria for recognition of enforcement of awards under the New York Convention, the Act, the Arbitration Act, allows the courts to annul an award where it has been successfully appealed on a point of law arising from the tribunal's award. And only where the court is satisfied that it would be inappropriate to remit the matters in question to the tribunal for reconsideration. And this point of law in England and Wales is limited to only questions of laws, law of England and Wales or Northern Ireland. So a party can therefore only appeal where the law of England and Wales and Northern Ireland was the law applicable to the merits of dispute. Um, annulment proceedings do not typically suspend enforcement proceedings, also in England and Wales. The English courts do have the power to adjourn, adjourn, adjourn an enforcement action where there is an ongoing annulment proceeding at the seat, but this is not automatic. As a condition of adjourn adjournment, English courts may impose an order for security on the party seeking adjournment. Um, so having said that though, English courts will generally abide by a decision on annulment by, made by the supervisory court at the seat of arbitration. So it's a very different approach than the French one that I've discussed before. As such, English courts will usually refuse enforcement of an arbitral award that has been annulled at the seat. However, in limited situations, English courts may depart from this approach, for example, where the foreign court set aside decision was so extreme and incorrect as to be open to that foreign court acting in good faith. <gasps> This indicates that uh, there is a very high a hurdle um, that must be uh, met uh, by a party seeking the enforcement of an award which has been annulled by the court of the seat. So to conclude, um, while both France and England and Wales seem to have established sturdy and, um, and um, strong legal frameworks to organize arbitral proceedings, and empower arbitrators to hand down uh, the arbitral awards, France seems to have the upper hand really in terms of enforcing awards, arbitral awards, no matter what on its soil and also in terms of confidentiality I mentioned. Um, indeed, the, the, the UK seems more squeamish in case uh, foreign awards have been annulled at the seat of arbitration. And uh, one good thing though for the UK, which is best than, than in France, is the statute of limitations for breach of breach, breaches of, of contract. Yeah, six years instead of five in France. So this is this is where the, U, the England and Wales wins. But for the rest, I think um, in terms of enforcement of the awards, it seems that France is a, is a, is a, is a, a more. Uh, pro arbitration system. So it is possible that the upcoming reform of the Arbitration Act will reinforce the ability of parties to enforce arbitral awards in England and Wales once the uh, uh, findings of the Law Commission set out in the report are put in place. So let's watch the space um, in the near future. Let's see whether England and Wales manages to improve its uh, system and its ind independence as well uh, in, in relation to um, enforcing arbitration awards, even those which have been successfully challenged at the seat of the arbitration. And yeah, thank you so much for being here, for listening to this talk. It's been lovely to uh, join you all. If you want to read a uh, as I said, um, a recent version of this uh, on this topic on who has the upper hand, 
between France and England and Wales for arbitration matters. Do have a look at uh, uh, our publications on our uh, uh, websites, crefovi.com and crefovi.fr. It's been lovely. Thank you so much. Bye now. Bye.